Oh my god, this game's tight. Okay, let's go ahead and do a final review before we end the stream for today. So, we played Resident Evil Village. We completed it on standard mode. It took about, um, I mean, the save file said uh, about 11 to 12 hours, but if you know all the pauses and everything in between, I would say it's more close to um 14 ish hours for me so this is the final final thoughts i know i just put my first impressions a couple days ago but this is after all of that first of all is the game recommended it's 100 percent worth the money whether you are a hardcore re fan or not this is a great survival horror game there are a little bit of gripes that i have but we'll talk about that later the best part about this game is just well I wouldn't say in particular I had a favorite thing about it. It's moreover, the package overall is above average. This is obviously a AAA game, Capcom, uh, Resident Evil, long running franchise. And I, you know, I don't play many Resident Evils. I've played RE3 Remake, and that's pretty much it. I am very familiar with all the other ones, though. I've watched people play them, little bits and gameplay here and there, but personally, I've only just played RE3 uh, Remake. But I liked it, and this one. Even though it's first person, it kind of has the same feel to it. Um, I just have to say it was a blast all the way through. I don't want to do many spoilers, but there might be something dropped here or there. The game is perfectly fine on standard. And I'm going to be continuing to replay because after you beat the game, you will unlock a new mode called Mercenaries, which is like an arcade mode where you go do uh, some challenges in a village and you go do some more missions that way. But then I'm definitely going to be replaying the game on a much harder difficulty. Uh, it's called the Village of Shadows, which you unlock. It's going to go through it. And just like older RE games, you're going to be go you're going to be using the challenge points that you have achieved through your first run to go through a store and get more stuff like new weapons to unlock, new um, infinite stuff, infinite ammo to unlock. You can buy figurines and you can buy concept art and all of that stuff. So this game has quite a bit of replayability if you choose to try to unlock as many things as you can and there are a lot of challenges i mean a ton so you get a lot of bang for your buck here uh let's just talk about the overall pacing of the game it was fine there's a lot of areas where you're definitely going fast you're going slow it just felt like it was set pieces though i think that's the only problem i had it's ori village you go through this village and then you sometimes go on the outskirts to go fight bosses and um at times it gave you the illusion like okay it's opened up i'm gonna run around now no not really you only have a certain amount of areas to go to in the village and then you're forced to go do uh, a big challenge but then after you do the challenge boss you come back to the village it's slowly opened up again so it is a little formulaic but that's totally fine that's what it is today uh, i felt like the game kind of babied you a little bit there's a there's almost throughout the whole game there's a little tape on almost everything. There's a ladder with tape on it. There's boxes with tape on it. There's a rope leading you everywhere. It kind of felt like it was babying you. But anyway, this game is meant to be for, you know, they're trying to make it a wide appeal for all audiences. I feel like, and I don't know if this is the case, but on Hardcore or Village of Shadows, they really should get rid of that yellow thing. Get rid of all the hints and just have you go through it. But, you know, by that point, you've probably already played it. But if you're playing for the first time on Village of Shadows and it's gone, cool. That's going to make for a freaking fun and crazy experience. Um, the overall gameplay besides the pacing, like I said, it's all set pieces. So uh, it's like a lot of forced um, confrontations where you don't know if you need to destroy the enemy or if you need to run away from the enemy. There's a lot of weird stuff like that. I felt like um, the bosses... And the overall antagonist of the game is a bunch of them. They were pretty underwhelming. I would have loved more character development for each one. So it felt more... So you had more of an impact when you finally faced them and defeated them. And I know there's like little lore sprinkled in here or there. But it, it would have been nice to just have like some real backstory. Like real awesome interactions between Ethan and them. So we're like, oh, I like this character, but I don't want I should help you. But now I got to kill you to save my family. That would have been cool. I would have loved that. But overall, yeah, it's just it felt like you're just going from boss to boss to boss to boss. Like like village boss, village boss, village boss. And and then there's huge set pieces that kind of felt like you're going through a haunted house or you're going through a, a walk a Universal Studios roller coaster ride at times. And uh, the combat, it's not supposed to be Call of Duty like it's not supposed to be arcade like that's what Mercenaries is for. This is sluggish. 
and it's a little slow and that's because it's a survival horror game and that's kind of what they wanted to do and e even though I did play on standard mode I was kind of low on ammo and healing wares especially towards the end when you play the hard difficulties you definitely want to uh, skip enemies and keep all your weapons and stuff uh, you know unless you unlock the infinite ammo stuff but yeah that's the only gripe I had it just felt a little formulaic and a little predictable at times but you know like I said they're trying to make it appeal to a huge wide audience and I think this is gonna satisfy um, you know people who don't play the series like me I liked it a lot and people who have played the series people uh, praised the seven you know it went first person it changed up a lot it changed the pace up a lot and Eight is the continuation of that story. It's a nice little conclusion to that story, somewhat. And uh, yeah, I think this was a very, very solid game. Very solid game. And I'm going to continue to play even though I did finish and got the credits and everything. So it's a good game. That's my final review of Resident Evil. I don't know if there's anything else I wanted to say, but um, hey, that's it. That's it. If you're watching on Twitch, come on, I'm sorry, if you're watching on YouTube, come on by the Twitch. There's a link down below. I'm going to be doing first impressions and ending reviews for all the games we stream but yeah we're gonna keep on doing village so come on by